Hi everybody, your friendly neighborhood Glenn here, and I'm so glad that you've arrived. Today's video is brought to you by SkyTouch Technology, the hospitality industry's cloud-based innovative PMS. As the industry gets back to business, SkyTouch is rolling out brand new features designed to help employees get up to speed real quickly as they come back to work and find great success. Learn more about them at skytouchtechnology.com. Also, be sure to subscribe to our weekly newsletter. Text the word HOTEL to 66866. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're really trying to build that business. And of course, like us on Facebook and follow us on LinkedIn. A bit of good news coming out of the luxury hospitality industry, according to a brand new survey from the Forbes Travel Guide. In a poll with 418 luxury hospitality leaders, 54% of hoteliers believe the worst of the crisis is absolutely over, while 63% say business will return to sustainable levels within two years. And more than a quarter of uh, hoteliers, well, they're reporting ADR above typical seasonal rates. Just goes to show how important having a resort hotel at this particular time can be. In fact, according to that survey, 84% hotels are now fully or partially open to the public compared to 56% back in July. That's a huge increase and a huge sign that hoteliers are feeling that business is going to come back and there is money to be made there. Of course, 38% of respondents report delaying their reopenings with most citing not enough demand yet and 54% saying government restrictions are a problem. All right, 60% also say the state of their staff has either coped very well with this problem or are handling those extra responsibilities. But one troubling bit, only 80% of respondents said their staff has handled enforcing health and safety procedures well or very well. That's concerning. It's really essential that everyone in all of the hotels Follow the safety protocols, be it a guest, be it a staff member, whomever it is. The future of our global hospitality business is at stake here right now. And those 20%, they need additional training, they need additional power, and they need to be able to make sure that everyone in the hotel is following those mandates. One last bit from the survey. Travel restrictions, they keep changing, and it's forcing hoteliers to think local. And 78% of operators are finding they're welcoming more local and regional guests. Some of this might have to be with international guests no longer arriving and no domestic guests being able to go internationally. So domestic guests, they're staying home, they're getting in their cars, and they're driving to resorts, which is helping to push up that ADR at typical seasonal hotels. Okay, following our continuing coverage on California and the lack of hospitality industry opportunities there because of stringent local regulations, Governor Gavin Newsom actually did something that appears to be on the side of hoteliers, rejecting a measure that would have required employers at hotels, event spaces, airport businesses, and more to open jobs first to employees who lost them as a result of the declared state of emergency. The law affects employees who are laid off because of public health directive government shutdown order, lack of business, or reduction in force, or other economic reason. Now, the problem was the way the measure was written, it would require the rehiring of workers regardless of whether the employee was let go as a result of the state of the emergency. So if you fire somebody, in my interpretation of this, you would be forced under this legislation to rehire that employee even if they were having a negative effect on your business. Now, of course, the governor's uh, decision follows several days of labor union demonstrations calling on Newsom to sign the bill, and a message of support came, of course, from California Secretary of State Alex Badillo. Now, uh, at uh, Unite Here Local 11, of course, that union was not for this veto, and they say the veto is devastating to the low-wage workers who built the hospitality industry, especially Women of color who were looking for a leader to walk with them through this time of struggle, said Ada Brasino, Susan Minato, and Kurt Peterson, three co-presidents of the organization. And while we here at No Vacancy News Today believe that everybody has a right to work, and while people need to be protected, including those groups that Unite Here Local 11 mentioned, the wording of this particular bill was not done in such a way as to protect those workers while also keeping the needs of business owners in mind. Both sides need to come together to understand what is best for a mutually successful relationship between owners, operators, and their staff. 
All right. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate you listening to another episode of No Vacancy News today. Be sure to hit that like button if you're on YouTube. Like us on Facebook and LinkedIn. And of course, subscribe to our newsletter by texting the word hotel to 66866. I'm Glenn Hausman. Thanks for watching. Thank you.